drift and float, and float and drift. To the next important lifetime that holds important information for you today. Let me know when you're there. there. Are you inside or outside? Outside. Mm -hmm. Are you, is it daytime or nighttime? Daytime. Daytime. Mm -hmm. And are you male or female? I'm female in this life. How old are you? 22. Take a look at your feet. What are you wearing? Beautiful sandals. But yeah, sandals and very pretty robe. It's a very light fabric and a light colored fabric with mm -hmm. some metallic threads woven in and a design. Mm -hmm. What about your hair? What color is your hair? It's a very pretty dark brown. Curly. Mm -hmm. What's your name? I have a It's almost like, again, Sarah, but like Sarai. It's Spell that. S-A-R-A-I. Okay. Okay, Sarai. Look around and tell me what you see in your environment. Oh, buildings, my hometown, the people of my town. It's very beautiful, very peaceful. Mm -hmm. Can you describe these buildings? There's, they're of sandstone. Like some of it is built up with stone, but stone made of, I don't know how to describe it, but very... <clears throat> Stone facade, stone buildings mm -hmm. um, with circles cut out for the doors. And there's there's stone for some or wood for some of the structure too. It's it's there's places where wood is used. Mm -hmm. What year is it for you? I don't know. It's very early on. We don't really speak of time in terms of years there. Mm -hmm. But I am a healer. Mm -hmm. What uh, country or state are you in? Lemuria. Repeat that. Lemuria. Mm hmm. So, so you, are you on Earth? Yes, it's it's on Earth, but it's since disappeared. Mm -hmm. Tell me about your people. Oh, so so kind, so wise. It's peaceful. Many different people there, and, and we get along. We we honor one another. We honor each other's light and their, their gifts and their abilities. Mm -hmm. Whether people are like myself that do the healings or whether they're tradespeople or they go on to the water to get things. We just live together and, and work together collaboratively. Mm -hmm. 
And the people, do they speak the same language we're speaking now? No. Mm -hmm. But the one I'm speaking through is, is shy about allowing me to truly speak the language. She is concerned of how it will be received that she's speaking of this time and place. Mm -hmm. You can let her know that it's fine, that there's no need to be fearful. Can you ask her to share a bit of that language with us? Ngokre. <clears throat> Pray. Nga. It is, it is hard for her, but it is hard for me to translate because often we spoke not just in sound, but in, um, like in tones. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and someone would answer and not quite the people of space, but different than what humans know now. Mm -hmm. And so you mentioned you're a healer. How do you heal? There are many ways. There are special stones we use that we place on the body for healing. We also, we use, <clears throat> we use waters that we have blessed and we use teas and, and we make up foods for people that are healing foods. But also even when we place our hands on our people, we can tell where they're hurting and where their pain is. And we ask them what that pain serves and we ask them how to release it, how mm -hmm. to let it go. And we give them love while they do that because often that pain is because more love is needed. Mm -hmm. And we will have some that will sing while the healing happens. Some healings are quiet and some we use the crushed up flowers and we place them on specific parts of the body. And, and we see their body filled with light and we beam the light over their body and ask it to be healed. Mm -hmm. Do your people have a human form? Yes. Mm -hmm. Can you take a look at your body and tell me what you're wearing? Robes. Um, my my robe is is light colored but it it covers but it is it is looser and lighter mm -hmm. because there is a quite a bit of sun where i live and it covers me because in in this life i have darker skin and darker hair some cannot take as much of the sun it just depends and so what are you doing out, out now outside as you overlooking the buildings in the city i'm walking to my <clears throat> the place our our religious center our temple so that i may meditate and and prepare for healing. Mm -hmm. And it's a healing for yourself or for someone else? Someone else. Mm -hmm.
it's a very wise woman in our, our community that needs extra healing. Mm -hmm. And so I am very pleased to be so young and to be doing this and I want to do a good job. So I'm, I'm meditating and, and asking for the wisdom to know how best to heal her. Mm -hmm. Praying as it were. Okay, so tell me, go ahead and tell me what happens next. I go and I go to my building where I do the healings and I arrange some things on the table for her where the, it's like a slab of stone and I welcome her in and I have her lay down and tell me, you know, about her pains and I begin to sing and place the flowers around her. Mm -hmm. And I use the, the water that I've been consecrating and I put it at various points. And I invite some of my fellow healers for us to join hands while we are visualizing her ultimate healing and health. Mm -hmm. She's quite receptive. Can you describe this process that you go through when you're healing? Depending on what is needed, we put stones on the person or flowers. <coughs> Sometimes water. And then we hold our hands above the person and we allow the life force to flow through us much like your Reiki and we ask that it remove the disease from the person the pain or the suffering We ask them to help us let it go, to be filled with light. And their bodies become more and more light filled as we see them. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> like we sense it, they don't actually become pure light. Mm -hmm. But we sense them filling with light and releasing the illness. And we visualize the illness being captured, if you will transformed into a sphere of energy ball that is repurposed into the white light mm -hmm. so that that illness may not come on to another. Mm -hmm. And then we usually, we let them rest for a little and then we say a blessing over them to continue the healing and to seal it. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Okay, let's go ahead and close this scene, Sarai. Close this scene, and we're going to move to the very next important scene in our lifetime. As Sarai, there's something important that's happening. Tell me what's happening. I'm having a baby. <laughs> How old are you there? Not much older, about 25. Although, for our people, I'm a little bit older, but not too much. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Tell me, do you feel healthy? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, I've prepared and I've called upon my sisters in the community to help me with this. So while there is pain, it is nothing that I cannot manage. Mm -hmm. And who's there with you? My beloved my partner and <clears throat> my parents. What's your partner's name? 
Thomas, like Thomas. Mm -hmm. And your parents, what are their names? The, the father's Aline, E-L-I-N, Aline. And something like Marta, mm -hmm. Marta for the mother. Mm -hmm. Why don't you go ahead and connect with Eline and Marta and Thomas? Do you recognize their energy as anyone in your current life? Okay. Eline and Marta are the mom and dad I have in this life, which threw me for a minute because I'm like, oh, you guys get along and you're cool in this lifetime. Okay. <laughs> so your father is your father and your mother is your mother? Yeah, like the same genders as well, yeah. Okay. Okay. So tell me how this whole process of childbirth, how, what do you go through when you're giving birth? Um, <clears throat> just encourage that to, to, that I have to push to allow the baby to come out. Um, to I keep people putting damp cloths on me to cool me mm -hmm. <clears throat> somebody's gently saying see the baby is out like almost as a way of encouragement it's mm -hmm. very much like the the childbirth process we have now it's not mm -hmm. radically different surprise but like it's not um surrounded in folklore either so to speak like not um you know that if i don't know it's like the baby i'm i'm pushing out and it's difficult but the baby is coming out mm -hmm. it's healthy mm -hmm. and do you give birth to a boy or girl a boy mm -hmm. and what do you name him It's rather similar to Liam. Liam, I. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And so, tell me what happens next. Holding my baby, hearing him cry. Feeling love, so much love. He's strong. I'm tired. There's some way that I don't know quite how, but in all of this, in some way, the cord is removed, like or cut. And, and they tie the cord for the baby as well. Mm -hmm. So tell me what happens next. Singing to my baby and holding him. How do you feel? Joyous. But tired. Tired and joyous. Mm -hmm. But like, this is part of my purpose. Mm hmm Okay, let's go ahead and close that scene. And let's move to the very next important scene in that lifetime is to arrive where something important is happening. Tell me what's happening. I'm dressed just a little bit differently, like I kind of slightly cover my head. And it might be because I'm a mother or because of being the healer, but my boy... My little boy and I are meditating together. I'm showing him how to meditate. Mm -hmm. How old are you there? 33. Way to connect with your son, Liam. Do you recognize his energy as anyone in your current life? My cousin. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, how do you meditate with your son? Tell me what's happening. 
he's doing well at it, but he's a little fidgety, which makes sense if he's my cousin Colette in this life. <laughs> um, but it's very peaceful, very happy. It's like <clears throat> I'm guiding him and showing him the way. How old is he? Like seven, eight years old. Mm -hmm. So tell me what happens next. He asks to learn more, to understand more of what I do. He's like, show me what the rocks do, Mama. Show me what the rocks do. <laughs> And do you show him? Mm -hmm. I mean, slowly, but like I show him that they're, they're meant to help people heal and what the different crystals do and that they're healing. And, <clears throat> and I tell him when he's older, we can go and, and find a special crystal for him. Mm hmm why is this day important? What's happening? That he's coming into his gifts. That I'm seeing that he will be a healer like I am. Because I've kind of like stood back and allowed him to be and just be a little kid and a boy. And I always suspected he would be like me, but I wanted to give the space to find out. Mm-hmm. Awesome. All right, let's go ahead and close this scene. Sarai, close this scene and move to the day in that lifetime, the day that you take your last breath in that lifetime of Sarai. Be there now. Tell me what's happening. It's very sweet. I, um, <clears throat> I go to this specific tree and it's very beautiful. It's very shaded. And it's as though I know and that this journey is for me. And it's like I go to the tree and I have just enough energy to make it there. And I sit beneath it and I reflect on what a good life I've had and how fortunate I was and how grateful and how loved. How old are you there? 40 something. Is it common for your people to die at? It's, yeah, it's not uncommon. It's not, in my case, I'm not sure why, but no one is surprised. Mm -hmm. So, so even though there are those that are older, it's like, I've done what I was here to do and it's my time to go and I accept that. Mm -hmm. And my son is having a hard time with it, but yet he accepts, he understands it too. Mm -hmm. It's like, I don't want to let you go, but I know I need to. Mm -hmm. And so how does your body feel there? Ready to let go of the physical form, mm -hmm. but not in, you know, extraordinary pain or as though I'm suffering. It's, it, it's more like, I don't know how to explain it. It's like, it's my time and I know this. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, well, okay, it's my time, people. It's time for me to go walk to the tree and peace out. Love you all. I'm so grateful for you all. But it's really beautiful in a way. Mm -hmm. It's like this contemplative walk and sitting under the tree and giving thanks and gratitude and contemplating and then just that last sleep. Mm -hmm. Okay. So go ahead and take your last breath in that body. That's all right. 
your last breath in that body that's alive. And as, you're, as you float above that scene and you look down, what is happening? People have gathered and they're very gently like putting my body on something to help carry it. My son is kind of sweetly folding my hands in front of me and closing my eyes and my husband is, you know, rubbing my son's back or letting him know that he's doing a good thing. And my husband is crying some, but almost again, like he's like, he understands mm -hmm. and I'm being carried. And I think I'm put on display at first, like somebody prepares me mm -hmm. and then I'm put like on display a bit at the healing center where I worked so that people can say goodbye, almost a funeral of sorts. Mm -hmm. And then like the same thing where they carried me, they gently like take it out to the water and it's a big body of water. And it's like, they gently put it there and push it out. And it's like, I float out to sea. Mm -hmm. It's very lovely. Mm -hmm. And so as you look over that lifetime of Sarai, what was the lesson for that life? Live your gifts, love deeply, heal all that you can and all who you can. Mm 